Uh, Andy, do you want to talk a little bit about yourself and your business? Yeah. So uh, I'm Andy Rosick, the founder of Self Pubbed. We are redefining publishing for the mobile game space. So essentially, we are providing almost like a Salesforce.com uh, for game companies, where there's a whole suite of tools to run your actual business. Most game developers know coding really well, and they know graphics really well. And then that's kind of like a hard stop right there. Uh, and we come in and go, what about monetization, analytics, uh, promotion, marketing, and the big one, discovery. Uh, and we just launched a discovery tool called Thumb Arcade. So thumbarcade.com, you can go there mobile, go there online, and you'll actually see our member game titles in there. And so uh, it's at a huge uh, start. We've been in the media all over the place. You can uh, scruble that, <laughs> whether that's <laughs> Google, Bing it, whatever. Uh, you will find us. And so the idea is that uh, indie developers need tools, and uh, they really don't have any other options, right? You're either Googling it yourself, or you're signing with a big publisher and kind of giving away all your IP and your rights and your, your revenue, your brand. Uh, so we come in the middle and say, no, you're the publisher. That's how it works. But we're going to give you the tools to actually help you grow your business and be, become successful. Uh, we had a chat and we talked about, you talked about doing a, a HTML5 app in a native wrapper. Sure. Can you talk just a little bit about what that means compared to just an HTML5 app and why it's 125% cheaper and faster? Uh, yeah, no matter uh, what your math skills are, basically, if you're, if you're developing native code, iOS is relatively, again, in, in the sense of mobile, is easy. You go to Android, and it's an unmitigated disaster, right? I mean, there are so many phones, platforms, versions of the OS, forked versions of the OS. It just gets crazy. So. It, it, it just adds to your cost to make sure, especially if you want to reach you know, a really wide audience, you're saying, oh, I'm going to try to hit everybody. Well, you're not. But even if you try to hit a lot of everybody, it just gets really expensive to know that your app is working right, how you want it, the look, the feel, the speed. All that stuff is happening on all those devices. So um, yeah, it, it becomes a major issue. So we launched our Thumb Arcade site as a website only, initially, for a couple reasons. One is we don't have to face all those issues because the web browsers, we know this, it's, a, it's a more limited set. So even though there's now a lot of devices. Now you're saying you launch it not as a web app, but it, as just a website. It is a website. So, so the it's top an left app corner. That fights as a, it looks like a website, but it is an app in the background. OK. But it's, it's not a wrapped app. It's not a native code app. So in other words, you know, even if, if you've got a, the newest you know, Samsung Galaxy S3, if you've got an old, you know, clunky old you know, Android device, if you've got the new iPhone 5, you've got the iPhone 3GS, it looks good on all those devices. It was a lot easier to test on those and make sure it did than it was to go native code and go, it's going to look awesome across everything. Because as soon as it doesn't look awesome, guess what happens? They come to you, right? <laughs> they go, this doesn't work, and the you know, support emails start coming in. The like, you know, crap emails from you know media places go. You sent this to me, and I got this old phone, and, and I'm not going to write your story. So you, you come up with all these problems, going, how am I going to fix this? Well, you might be a small team, maybe one person, and how do you fix that problem, right? So in the web, at least you have some, you know, uniformity. It's not completely uniform, but it's better than going the native code app. But I'm not saying that's the best option, right? Because you don't have the distribution, you don't have like push alerts, you don't have the things you get within apps. So there's a lot of balancing questions you have to ask, but, but you have to ask the questions, right? What, what are you looking to do? What are you looking to spend? Who are you looking to reach? Yeah. And, and how, how are you going to actually hit all those people. So if you're not asking those questions, then you're probably just following you know, some story you read recently <laughs> and trying to launch an app or a website or whatever. But ask the questions. What, what are you looking to do? And you have to, once you boil that down, then you can start to make decisions about how you're going to program, what code, web, app. You got to remember, though, Facebook has like a couple users. And so because of that, there's a lot of data that you know, they're updating constantly, like real-time data. So again, another decision to make. How much data are you pushing to each and every single user? And if it's not that, 
like massive loads of photos and videos and, and content updates, then HTML5, a wrapped app, whatever, may work really well for you. But it doesn't work well for Facebook. So again, watch, you know, watch where you put the weight on headlines. You know, for Facebook, it sucked, right? Because they have so much data. Think about the volumes of information they're pushing to how many phones all over the planet. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, when you get there, you can make that decision too. But until you get there, make more wise decisions about what makes sense for you. Can you code at, a, at an HTML uh, level and maybe wrap it as an app or leave it as a website? And that makes more sense, more monetary sense for you where you can grow your business and then reach the decision, do I need an app or not? Uh, well, so most of my comments tonight are going to be uh, from the standpoint of the gaming world because that's where I live right now. But I've been in mobile for 15 years. Yes, there was mobile back then. Um, this is two-way pagers. But uh, <laughs> so, so I've been through you know big enterprise deployments, mobile payments, consumer, B2B, you name it. But just so you understand, like my mindset is, is broader than the gaming side, but I'm going to answer from that. Um, there's a lot of tools. We, we rolled out Thumb Arcade using OWA, Open Web Analytics, uh, just because we could tie into that and deliver specific analytics to each of our member studios who wanted to see how their game was performing on our site. It was a lot easier than using Google, although Google's getting better. Um, I've used Flurry in the past for uh, when I was a game studio. So I've used them a bunch. Um, there's a whole host of game-specific analytic companies and other you know, types of, when you want to drill down to the level of, of this cohort group of type of players of this age and this demographic, why do they drop off at level three? You know what I mean? So you can get really finite detail, um, but it costs, right? So you start with free and you work to how much money you're making and how important is that data, right? And you can get overwhelmed with data. You can be like, ah, oh, but like a 2% spike today, and, you know, and, and run around the kitchen and you're like, oh wait, no one cares. <laughs> so, so you gotta be careful about data too. So there's a valuable set of data and then there's the like overwhelming set of data. Um, but yeah, so in terms of these, test flight I use all the time. Um, I remember companies send me games and, and our team games that we can test and look at, look at how they're performing and, and talk about uh, monetization and uh, how are you, you know, gameplay, physics, whatever, so we can actually interact very easily, even though iPhone makes it hard, test flight makes it easy. Um, Aftwack is great on Android. Um, Perfecto Mobile is great to get onto a live device, and especially if you're doing Android, test on live devices, please, please. Like, Dang it, that was a question that. for later. No, you have to, trust me. Like, don't pretend like you test it on your one phone that you have and your, you know, on your desk. Like, that doesn't work. It's a, it's a disaster waiting to happen, test on Android. And just because Android numbers are big, they're big in China, they're big in India. You know, like, be careful about, like, where you put your value on, but, like, test on Android and make sure you know that the hottest devices that people have, right, actually have right now, not the ones that sit in the stores, they actually have right now, your stuff works on there. And so that's, like, Aptoac or Perfecto Mobile, others, like, let you do that, right? So make sure your stuff looks good. You spend all this time on it. Don't pretend it works on Android. No, I've seen inside the black box, and it's not pretty. Um, <laughs> I know the actual algorithm that Apple uses to rank the top 10 lists, uh, the top 25 lists, or whatever the list is. Basically, it used to be, once you got in the top 10, top 25, you'd sit there for a week, right? So the goal was get in there, and then you just live, feed off that attention, right? So then they trimmed it down to a day. So 24 hours, still though, 24 hours was a massive spike, like you was talking about, massive spike in downloads and sales. Awesome, still, okay? W worthy of spending money to get there. And then they went, you know what? There's, there's too much openness to this. People can just buy their way in and whatever. So now it's hourly. No, no joke, I see the shocked faces out there. Hourly, and it's not just how many downloads you have. It's a multiple prong, and I won't give you the exact numbers, but let's just say number of downloads is a big number, like a big chunk of it. But there's also your star rating. 
There's also about three or four other things. The actual revenue you bring in. Oh, wait, they make money off of you. That's right. Um, and, and a few other things. But let's just say that if you spent a really good, you know, ad buy on um, Tapjoy or whoever, like, I'm going to go buy users. It could be the shortest lived hour of your life. <laughs> Right? You can get this like spike bit and drop right off the other side. And, and is that spike worth it, right? Was there enough volume for what you paid, especially when you're talking about best case, best plan scenarios, like $1.50 per user? How much does your app cost? So, d how, so much, how much revenue do you earn from that user, right? So right. It's, it's a funky system. So just to, to, your, to your point of like, it's a black box. It kind of is. Apple makes it that way on purpose.